and welcome back to Yarn Lane. It's our um, first week ever of Yarn Lane. It's been brilliant, hasn't it? I have loved it. Loved the crochet that we've had and we've had tools. And today we've got needle felting because obviously it is yarn, isn't it? So it's nice. We're going to bring you lots and lots of different sorts of yarn crafts. And I know we always think of yarn crafts as being knitting and crochet, but they're not. There's loads of other things like macrame, tatting. Hmm, quite interested in that. Lots of things. So it's brand new to us, but we do have our own website. So if you want to shop with us, you have to come on to www.yarnlane.com. There's the website, as you can see. If you click on Watch Live, just in the same way as you did with Sewing Street, all the products that we'll be selling on Yarn Lane in this hour are listed below. So they're all on pre-order at the moment. Even before we went on there, they've already started to sell. So um, today, obviously, we're doing needle felting, more Christmas needle felting, but we've also got the other needle felting kits in there. There's lots of other um, general products in the same way with Sewing Street. So we've got all the basic products you need. We've got lots of crochet hooks and knitting needles and tools and accessories and stitch markers and all the things that you need. Um, and we've got different kits, lots and lots of different things. So you, for the basic items that you want to just pop onto the website, look, find what you're looking for. The headings are across the top. For anything that's on the show today, in the same way as Sewing Street, it's below the watch life. Remember that there's only one P&P per day, which is 3 95 Now that applies across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. So if you bought something eight o'clock this morning on Sewing Street and you buy something now on Yarn Lane, it will still be just the one P&P because we are sort of joined together. But we do have our own website and we do have our own ordering, but we are joined together for that. So that's how you shop on Yarn Lane. So if you want to get in touch with us, um, and you want to message us and send us pictures of your makes where well you can join the Yarn Lane fan page on Facebook. That's brilliant. We've got loads of people on that now. If you want to get in touch with us right here and now and today, you can message the studio, which is studio at yarnlane.com. So you can send us any of your messages or if you've got any questions for the, about the need of felting, if you're new to it, Steph is an absolute expert, so she will be able to help you. And then do join our fan page as well. Go onto the Facebook site. And it's a starting to become a really good community. Lots of help. A lot of people who felt like, oh, well, I do loads of knitting and crochet and I never really know who to show it to because it's obviously it's not Sewing Street. It's become quite a community. And I've, I'm always, I'm go on to it every day and have a look. And they're all chatting and they're putting pictures on. So do join the fan page as well because it's, it's a really nice place. It's lovely to see people sharing their makes and what they do. And I love to see what everyone's doing. You know, some people do some wild things. Talking about um, interesting things that have been made, we've got a photograph here, which is incredible. So this is a crocheted poppy dress. It was made for Albury Grange Care Home and Morris Care, but the whole dress is made from individual crochet poppies. I crocheted a poppy this year. I've forgotten to wear it today. That's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Well, perfect for today as well. Anyway, so today we're doing needle felting and because it's November, we're doing Christmas needle felting. Now we've got three kits available for you today. So they are available as a bundle so you can buy all three kits together. And the price is, 35 pounds and 97 pence so that's saving four pounds and in the kit you will get the kits to make the gnomes times three the robin which is in an embroidery hoop and the snowman which is just a little figure now you can buy them separately as well so let's have a look at the first one we'll have a look at the gnomes okay so there's the little gnomes they're so sweet and they've got little noses and their hats covering their eyes just like real gnomes. Okay. And then you've got the kit. So in the kit you have got everything you need. It's got the felting wool, the needles, the sponge and the instructions. So you've got everything you need in the kit. Shall I open it up? 
because I know if you've not tried needle felting before, you need to, you wouldn't know what you need. So you wouldn't know whether you've got everything, but you have. So you get the sponge, which is what you you'll see in a minute. What how you do this if you've not done it before? You get all the wool you need. So you get the grey for his body and the white for the beard and the spots and the red for the hat. And oh, that's one of the noses. That's like a beigey colour. You get the needles that you need, these big needles, all in a test tube, and instructions. And the instructions aren't just words, they're pictures as well. But don't worry, you don't just need these because Steph is here today and she's going to show you exactly how to do it. And obviously, like all of our shows, it will be available on YouTube tomorrow. So once you get the kit, you can watch it back. So if you've not tried needle felting before and you'd like to have a go, then Steph is going to show you exactly how to do it. I, it's just such a wonderful craft. It's, I love the way you, that you just use these natural wools and then somehow you create somehow amazingly you create a gnome it's a lovely craft and and with all as with all of the crafty kit company um kits everything you need is in there so you don't have to try and go and buy different supplies and they've really thought them through about how you do it and aren't these gnomes gorgeous they are they've got real little characters and obviously when you make yours you can make your own this one's got like it's almost like got smoke coming out of the top of his hat and he looks a bit like a toadstool with the spots. But you obviously, you can customise them to make them however you want. So, let's, let's look at the snowman. He's lovely, isn't he? He's lovely. So, let's open the kit for the snowman. Again, in the snowman is everything you need. So, you've got... Let's move that. There we go. He's fallen over. It's facing that way. I'll, I'll lay him down, then you can see him. So you've got all the wool. You've even got the little bit of for the orange carrots. You've got all the white for his body and the black and the red for his scarf. And then inside the kit, I'll just open this very carefully, inside this little bag. It's beautifully packaged. Isn't that lovely that all the little pieces are inside a paper bag rather than just thrown in the bottom? So you've got the special needle felting needles in the test tube there, and you've got that. But then there's also, that's a really nice touch, there's the pipe cleaner and the string specially made for his broomstick. And that's what I really love about these kits. So they've really thought about it. They put everything in because they could have just sort of left that out and that say, or oh, find your own, your own pipe cleaner. But it's all there, everything you need. And I know that... Um, Needle felting is becoming increasingly popular. So many people want to know how to do it. And I think we're so lucky to be able to get the Crafty Kit Company in today to actually demonstrate it. Because everything you need is in the kit. But it is very nice to have all the materials as well. So, so the Robin is the next one. Now, I do like the Robin because he's... A, He's in a hoop, so he's like a decoration. You know, he's a nice little, he's, he's actually very, he's very sweet, isn't he? So, the robin, is the robin the most popular? Well, we thought the gnomes would be the most popular. The robin is the most popular. So, in the robin kit, you get the hoop. It's all there, ready to put, to do, you haven't got to think about that. You've got the blue felt for the background. You've obviously got your... The black wool and the brown and the white and the red. And I love the way that it's just got a hint of snow across the top of the branches. It's a beautiful, just like a work of art. And you've got the sponge and the needles. And you've even got the needle and thread for finishing the back. That's amazing, isn't it? Because that's normally the sort of thing that would be left out. But they really have thought about it so that you can actually make that drawstring finish on the back of your hoop. The needle and thread is there as well. So this is a lovely kit. This is a great thing if you haven't tried needle felting before but you want to give it a go. Or if you're thinking about buying a craft gift for a friend or a relation. Needle felting is very in at the moment. I know so many people go, oh, I want to try it. We've had a lot of response on Yarn Lane saying, are you going to be doing needle felting? So this is by popular demand. 
So a third of the stock of this has already gone. But remember, if you love these, you can buy the whole bundle so you can have all three. You can have the snowman and the robin and the three gnomes for just $35.97. You've got all of them. And remember, you're not on your own because Steph is going to show us today how it's done. So welcome back, Steph. Hey. Thank you for coming back. You are now a needle felter. I am. Yes. Hooray. Hooray. I thought I should change my outfit as well, but no, no, I'll stay no, the no, same no. Then. You're a needle felter now. <laughs> so, um, where do you start if so, you've never done this? And one thing I will say as well is that on top of me being here today to share everybody, um, on the Crafty Kit website there is also felt along tutorials for each of these kits. Oh, are there? Yes. Oh, right. So you just yes. go onto the website. Yes, on the website where you um, on the Crafty Kit it sits there, the little video Fantastic. and links to So you've got that as well. Right. So don't panic. So you're not if you, on your yeah. own. <laughs> okay. Right. So where do we start? So as you say, the great thing in all of the kits is we've got all of the wool. Now I'm going to start off with the gnomes. Okay. I'm very surprised they're not the front runner. Well, well, it probably changed. Just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we've made three. Well, I've made three, um, and you've got three over there, and I've made three <gasps> rather unusual ones. Oh, you ones. made a Viking I one. I made a little Viking oh, one. But wow. it's up to you whether you want to make three small ones, two medium ones, or one large one. Okay. But you just need to really make your decision at the start because you want to um, divide up the felt so that you've got um, enough for them all. She dropped the floor. There we go. Right, so I will start off with our grey body and I'm going to assume I'm going to be making three so I'm going to split this into three and I'll just say to start with that when you're splitting the wall don't hold it there because you won't be able to do it. Hold mm. it far away and it will just Oh, pop. so you don't cut it then? You no, pull it. no. And okay. the, the reason you can't do it there is because you're holding both ends of the strand yeah. so yeah, pulling it out. Excellent. So I will just very briefly go in and start and explain to you why felting works. Right. So in this piece to start with, because we uh, are going to do his nice little um, tubular body, I'm going to roll it up. Now with the snowman that we'll come to later, I would actually start it off in a different technique because okay. he's a bit more um, sort of egg-shaped to start with. Right. But this one we would roll up. So I'm just going to roll him a bit of the way. And then I'm just going to start stabbing. So the needle that, that are in all of the kits, they're barbed needles, which means they've got their little um, bits. God, what's the word? No. Barbs. Yeah, so we call them barbs, barbs. for the moment they until I can think of anything hook. else. There we go. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't know what the, another word is. I did have a word, is. but it'll come to me. Oh, <laughs> it's little bits sticking out. Yeah, basically. Um, oh, and can by you, can you just go forward a little bit with it? So it's, that's it better. There you yeah. go. Lovely. Um, and I'm literally just stabbing, stabbing it, it in. Now what I'm doing here is just to point out is I'm not stabbing all the way into the mat like that because this is where the barbs are and I only need to stab into it. The mat is there for protection of the surface, not so that you actually right. go into ah, it. Okay, so <laughs> the barb only goes in it, so that's really what you've got to be pushing yes. in. Okay. Okay, and also um, the other thing is I'm going up and down at the moment. You can go it in an angle, but the rule is whatever angle you go in at, you must come out at. So if it's up and down, stay like that, sideways. Otherwise, you will break the needle. That's when needles uh, break. Because okay. wool, we think, is nice and soft, but once it's actually been felted a bit and you put the needle in and move it, uh, you, then it because will break. Okay. obviously, nice and thick up here, quite thin down here. Right. Okay. So why does this work? It works because if you put wool under a microscope, the strands would have scales on them. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. The rougher the wool, the more the scaly and stick up, sticky right. up the scales are. And the barbed needle, stabbing into that, basically start to lock those scales together. Oh, okay. When you put your jumper in the washing machine too hot and it comes mm. out and it's shrunk, that's because those scales have locked and they are not coming out. <laughs> Oh, so they've all locked in yeah. together. Yeah, you've okay. shocked them. This is that process, but slower. Right, okay. So we're just, at this moment, I say this little bit that I'm doing, I, c I consider it as tacking. Tacking it in rather than um, truly felting it. If I stabbed at this for a good 10 minutes, I will get it smaller and smaller, and it would end up... Oh, so the, right, so the longer you stab it for, the smaller it gets. Yes, okay. because basically you're compacting it, you're taking the air out, and you're locking those scales together, which will just make a nice tight 
Okay. Nice tight felt. So but is that pure wool? I've seen you have yes. to use pure wool. Yes. I mean, you can use mixed wool. Pure wool is proper felt. Right. Um, when I'm trying to get particular effects in different things, sometimes I might use some alpaca and things like that. But as you can imagine, that's nice and smooth and silky and that won't felt. So I have to put some wool with it. Okay. Yeah. But for these kits, it's 100% wool. <coughs> and um, mainly I think it's the Corriadel sheep that we've got the um, wool from here. Okay. Because it's really nice. Oh, it does say on here. 100% There you go. felt in wool. There we go. So, so just a little bit of stabbing and you've got yourself. Now, it is quite squishy. And one of the questions I'm asked is, how hard do you have to yeah. get it however you want? Do you know okay. what? I could leave it like that and I could carry on. I've made fish which are really flimsy and mm. that, and that's fine. It all stays together. Um, but it's just whether you want something which is tighter like that yeah. or whether you want something which is squidgy. So um, once you've done your tube, I basically need to decide that this is going to be the bottom of my little gnome. And so I stab him in a bit because obviously I want him to be able to stand up. So I need to give him a stronger base. Oh, so that makes his bottom nice and flat by yeah. just keep stabbing him. Yep, stab him in, give him, and I sort of give him a little... Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, so that he would actually stand up. Okay, what I'm going to do is go to my Blue Peter moment, go to one that I made earlier. Right. <laughs> because like um, needle focus is one of those things that it's a repetitive action to actually get it Well, it's you don't want it to happen too quick anyway. No. You know, it's no, supposed to it's the joy is in the making. It's quite cathartic. Mm. It's had a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I guess you're sculpting as well, yes, aren't you? Yes, absolutely That's you are. Really sculpting nice. with wool. Yeah. So we would want to make our nice, beautiful hat for our gnome. So and to get the rounded shape on the top, you just keep stabbing until it yeah. looks rounded. Yeah, so I've stabbed the... Uh, in fact, for the gnome side of it, um, I wouldn't worry about the top because I'm about to oh, add Oh, the more. hat's going to go on top yeah. anyway, isn't it? Just yeah. made that nice and neat. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Doesn't need to be. Right. But as I say, on my ones, I've done many different types of hats. Um, and I would suggest that initially you go with the traditional gnome hat and then mm. go from there. Because I say, you've, you've in the kit, you can easily make three. You might even be able to make more, actually. Oh, yeah, there's enough, on how big there's your names are. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I love this one because he looks like a toadstool. Yeah, <laughs> it's fabulous, isn't he? <laughs> so I'm going to quickly um, add some red for his hat. Now. Oh, so you don't make the hat separately then? You can do. Okay. I mean, over here, I have done such a thing where you could just pop it on. Right. But once again, there are loads of different ways that you can do this. So it's up to you. Yeah. And uh, that's, say, that's why it was quite nice to do the felt along video to actually mm. say, this is one way of doing it all the way along. And then, of course, there's another couple in the kitchen you can go back and then okay, do whatever you right, want. That's so, nice. so this is a really good introduction yes. to needle felting then. Oh, it's lovely. And, and so the gnomes are incredibly popular. I think um, the Crafty Kit Company has someone permanently on gnome duty. At oh, the really? Yes. <laughs> Just the Nordic gnome duty. Yes. The wonderful thing about the Nordic gnomes as well is that they're not just for Christmas. Nordic gnomes mm. look after your home all year round. Oh, do they? Yes, they oh, do. Oh, okay. Um, That's very important. It, yes. And the, the significance to Christmas is that they um, like to be left a bowl of porridge on Christmas Eve with mm. a big knob of butter. And then they'll look after your house for the rest wow. of the year. So. so porridge and butter. Yeah. Not golden syrup then. No, butter is what they love. Oh, okay. And then they look after your house all year round. Yeah. So they'd be a really nice thing to give to someone. Yes. A housewarming present. Yeah, that is, isn't it? Yeah. This gnome. But please remember to feed them porridge every year. Yeah, absolutely. So I am just... So we away. do also have, mm. from the Crafty Kit Company, the Beginner's Felting Bundle. Ah, so that yes. would be very useful for anyone who's starting off, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. And what would be nice there, and if I just get, I've made a little gnome behind here with a slightly different colour. <gasps> Looking a bit like yes, a Christmas tree. And you've got a bit like of greens and oranges. And oh, you could amazing. actually do something like that. So you, you know? could actually make the gnome from this bundle, Yeah, you, you could use your, and that's what the nice thing, I mean, the, all crafters, we like to have a stash, don't we? It is, well in here, you've got 80 grams of felting wood, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colours, three needles, two foam pan, pads, and a felting tool. Yep. 
So that's a very good start, isn't it? So the felting tool it talks about is um, is like this wooden one, and yeah. it's I'm holding the needle just straight, but some people find it difficult to hold the thing. So you've got um, it actually holds the needle, which is quite nice. And then you oh, literally so it's like pop a it around the other yep. needle, really. And then you pop it around the other way, okay. and then you've got. A nice needle holder. So yeah, so if you want to, um, you know, if you're starting off in felting and you want some more colours or you, you know, you want to do it differently, then this is brilliant. The beginner's felting bundle. So that's on, that's on the graphics at the moment, 19.99. But that's got loads of different colours. So if you bought one of these kits and you had the beginner's felting bundle, you could make so many things. Oh, I love yes. the Christmas tree gnome. You need this kit for that. So <laughs> that's ideal. Absolutely. Nice idea. And it's also, um, you know, it's like if you then wanted to make another snowman even, you've probably got enough of your extra bits Yeah, I mean, I think well. it's really important, like you say, to get the right yarn. So this is it makes life very easy for yes. you, doesn't it? Because you've got everything you need here. You've got, yeah. and it is, you can't just use any old yarn. It's got to be the right thing. And the great thing about the Corridale is it felt really nicely. Okay. Yeah. And that's for... If you well, if you're starting out, it's good to use the stuff that works well. But also, you know, if you've done a bit of needle felting, it's nice to be given something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any needle felter is going to be delighted with a bundle. Mm. <laughs> That's for sure. Absolutely. It looks so. it's, it looks like such um, a therapeutic thing to do, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. It's one of the. I mean, as we know, all craft has a therapeutic. Yes, well, about it's all it. mindful, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. But yes, there is something wonderful, especially uh, to if you've had a bit of a rough day <laughs> and um, a nice calm Stabbing. way. Yes, you know, and you're creating something while you're venting. That's yes. nice, isn't it? That's <laughs> true, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just Use your energy funneling this into a nice little thing. Oh yeah. But it is lovely, isn't it? I mean, and it's, it's nice. I mean, a lot of us are multi-crafters, aren't we? Yes. But it's, it's a very, it's completely different to sewing. Completely different. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's, um, I was talking um, earlier and saying how, but you can bring even embroidery into your, into this. You might want to decorate something yes, with a true, piece actually. of embroidery and that as well. Because I do think that as a crafter, you sort of, Mm. Between, don't I you? think the mixed media is very nice yes. though, isn't it? When you start mixing a little bit of yeah. crafts together, they all start to overlap a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Mm. You can always bring, uh, well, and in fact, um, the the 2D um, little robin is doing quite well uh, in the frame. In fact, I've seen someone bought one off me because they wanted to actually put that on their felt hat. They'd bought a beautiful hat oh and they wow. felt it. Oh, yeah, because you don't have to do it on the hoop, do no. you? You could actually, you have. So much wool in this. That's how much wool you have to do the mm. um, robin, and you use small mats. Right, so you can mats. have robins on everything. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Right. I'm going to just whisk along to my um, blue Peter moment and show so we've you. So we sold over half of the robin already. Yeah. There you go. Outside of the bundle. Wonderful. Wow. Excellent. And so our little gnome. If you sh you then get him nicely shaped. Um, and then we want to add his little character. So we were saying about the nice little sort of... Oh, it's like that sort of fleshy colour, isn't there? And we can make that gorgeous little nose that he's got. So on the Christmas tree one, I made a red nose. Which Obviously. I was quite, yeah, as yes. you would. And um, here I am just rolling up the wall. Now, people ask, you know, do I stab myself very often? And I usually say no, and then stab myself immediately afterwards. <laughs> so um, I, there, you can get little guards to protect yourself. But the way, if I'm doing something, sometimes I put my nail there so that I don't actually stab mm. myself. Um, but the other way is if you've got a, a business card or something, and you just want to hold it in that oh, to okay. just protect yourself. You know, if you suddenly think, oh, I'm doing a small piece here, a little I bit. I don't want worried. to stab myself. Yeah. But here you just. Literally stabbing a so little that's quite, ball. Yeah, that's, that sounds quite easy. So you just roll it into a ball and yeah, stab it. Basically. Yeah, I can see that. And then you will have your little nose. And then quite often, because you want to make sure it's nice and round. Because bearing in mind, felting um, happens with heat um, as well as stabbing. Uh, yes, things. So okay. Just doing a nice little round like that. And then you can decide, where am I going so to have the, the back? So the friction of rolling it in your hands mm. that provides so the heat. And now, and, and then you haven't even got to sew it on. Nope. So now I've literally just There's popped him there. 
you just and stab his nose on. To keep the round shape, you stab underneath. So I'm taking the wall underneath and stabbing it in. Oh, I see. So you don't go all the way through. No. You just sort of attach it yeah. around the sides. So you keep that. If you've made that nice shape that you wanted mm. to, so you're literally just going it's underneath. It's amazing, isn't it, how that works yeah. so easily? Collar down, you see? Felt nice and easy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fabulous wall. There you go. So he's suddenly got a little nose. <laughs> How cute is that? That's beautiful. I love that. And um, then we would want to add um, either a beard or a moustache. As you say, you've got so many different things. Or horns. Horns, yes. I love them. I know. Yes, yeah, see, some of yours have got mad beards. As yes, well, I they? thought I would show a display. Yeah, just to no, show the different nice things you can do. Yes, because these have all got quite sensible beards. Yes, well, I thought... That goes along with the pack, and I yes. think, you know, and then we'll just show. But you can, don't have to do that. No, do whatever you like. So to do the beard, I really am just taking off um, a nice bit of the fluff and decorating by saying, OK, I'm going to put that around. So I just take a little bit of it, tack him in. Can have a quick look, decide if I like it. Yeah. Oh, so that oh, so you can just sort of almost like because at it's that like stage, yeah, down, exactly. Isn't it? At that stage, I could just whip it off. Okay. If I think, so you pin oh, it around no, the edges a, by it, have a look, just yeah. pushing it in, and then pushing if you it. like it, just then you secure it. Yeah. I love it. And, and like you say, you've got loads of other bits of wool. So if you like, oh. want to put spots on the hat, they've got. Yes. Oh, this one's got a spiral. Yes, so you've got the spiral which almost goes into smoke. Yeah, it looks like he's got really smoke cute. coming out of his chimney. But you've got him, and say him, I made him a nice little at the top, so he had smoke. Um, I just went elaborate on, I thought once he had a moustache like that, he didn't really need any spots no. on his hat. Um, and yeah, I plaited little side bits. That's brilliant, so I love that one. So you can go as mad as you mm. like. But as I say, full instructions, you have it all written, as yeah. well as the um, pictures, and we have the following And the videos along. as well. Yes. And you can, you know, use your imagination. Oh, absolutely. Wow, I love that. That's brilliant. So I think I should mention the 2D. Okay. Yeah, completely different, completely isn't it? Different. Completely yeah. different. So let me get to my... So number one, I will say to you, you do not have to be able to draw to do this. I cannot draw. Okay. <laughs> so the bundle... Um, it's is all, all three Christmas kits. Remember, if you want to buy all of them, and then you've got loads of materials, more than enough to do everything else. It's only thirty five ninety seven. You get all three kits together with a saving of four pounds. Fabulous, and that could be something you want to do yourself and a gift. For, I mean, you could even make this as a gift, couldn't you? The little yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it depends which way you want to go. This is a gift for somebody, but it's also the kit is a gift yeah. as well, isn't it? Absolutely. So the robin is selling really well on its own, but. But it is still available. There is still a few available, but also it's available in the bundle. Fantastic. Okay. So, so you put the felt in the hoop. So, well, the reason why I did that this time was just to... I don't felt it when it's in the hoop, but I put it in the hoop because I thought, actually, what that does is by undoing it and taking it out, is that actually draws your circle for you. Okay. So I can now see where I need to put my little... Right. Um, robin in the middle. Oh, so is there a template in yes. here? Yes. So Let in the back, which I have cut out, in the back here, you have, I'm going to bring it into shot. There you go. You have your little Robin template. Oh, okay. And you can decide which way he's going to be, left oh, or right. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I've cut mine out. But you said there's enough wool. So if you, were, if you had another piece of felt yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And you I can mean, make another one. it's like I thought you might want some bright blue next time or any yeah, colours you might yeah, want to true. do. So, you know. I presume you have to do it into felt. No, as well, you can do it into linen. You oh. can do it into. Oh, right. Because you really are tickling it in. And if you look at the. She says, knocking it over. Look at the back. The amount which actually comes through is not a lot. Right, so you could easily create more of these pictures, but just on your own fabric. Yeah. That's or, like you, like you say, on could Put it on a jacket. Else. If you've got a jean jacket, as long you as you don't wash it. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's why a jacket might be okay. Yeah. A hat would yeah. be okay. Jeans, probably not so much because mm. you're going to wash those. But, but a yeah. jacket would look amazing, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can put it on linen. Obviously, um, felt is an ideal 
things, right. to be honest, but it will, it will, it will absolutely work on other fabrics. Work on okay. others. So, um, as I say, you don't need to be able to draw because you now then would just take the little template, as I have, put it on, draw around the shape, and then just fill in. You can just copy that. Yeah. The you just the lines, yeah. As I say, I cannot draw. Absolutely. No, I can't either. <laughs> I can't draw for toffee. I have well, to label my drawings. I cannot draw, and I actually managed to do that, so I'm actually extremely pleased with myself, <laughs> I have to say. No, I have to, if I give a drawing to someone, I have to label it flower, yeah. leaf. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, no one, no one has any idea what I've done. Brilliant. Um, That's that. really good, isn't it? Because you can make something that looks very creative. Yes. Very yeah, and you don't have to be. No, absolutely. Fantastic. So now I'm going to show you the small amounts that you actually um, need to do this. So you really are just pulling off tiny bits and taking the needle. And this time you really are because you're just putting it into the felt. So you really don't. You will hear it go into the um, mat underneath. Yeah. But you just have to slightly. So you're just sort of securing you're it in place and covering it. that I area. I think you're then. tickling it on. Tickling it. Yeah. Tickling it in. And what I do, probably because of my non-confidence in my drawing, is I put a line of the wall that I'm doing down the bottom like Painting by numbers, I yes, think you might call yes, it. Yes, and I'm with you on that. <laughs> so that it just gives that line first. Yes, so that you, you know can you in. can come up above that and... Fill it in, but it is another small piece, and you can see how you very quickly build it up. And I think you can probably see how it would work going onto linen and things like that yeah. as well, because as long as it's um, a woven fabric, basically, that it's got some threads to catch onto. Mm, that's lovely. I really like that effect. And also, because uh, you're painting, um, obviously the next bit you would do is the red breast, but I'm just going to show this with regards to the wing. You might think, well, actually, if I put um, the brown on, that might just be a little bit too of a stark contrast. You can take a bit of the light grey and a bit of the brown and just mix it. Oh, so it's like tweeded. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and, the, and so you can leave it so it's like a rough mix yeah. or just keep on... Pulling it, pulling so it, it really, yeah, so really it's blends in. Mix. So if you have other kits, you can start mixing yep. colours together, can't you? Yep. So you can make yourself a little bit of pink here, and yeah, also and you absolutely, can have like, um, you know, a brownie red. Yeah. And then if you have the beginners kit with all the colours that they've got in there, in there you then can start. Oh, I didn't. So you can start creating yeah, colours. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you would, and, and you can see the difference there between those. You've got that nice blend there. Yeah, that no, it that's would lovely. So that does. So you could keep the brown for the branch, but the blend for the yeah. robin. Oh, it's getting very arty now. Oh, it's yeah. lovely. The photos in these instructions are really good. Yes, really describes it, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? It's gonna, this is where I, you will have slightly felted it on, but it, you just literally put it off nice and um, softly rather than rip it off. Right, okay. Yeah, but it will be absolutely it's fine. So here's one that I've done a bit more on just showing, th and I'm mm. just going to show you with regards to the wing, because I say I've got quite a dark brown up there. I'll mix that a little bit. So in terms of doing things like the wing, where I've got a distinct round, rounded top, and in terms of the actual um, structure of the bird, obviously it'd be quite solid. Yeah. A nice way to get that um, more solid line rather than fluffy edges is to just bend it round and put it on like that. So that then you'd have the start of that Yeah, because I guess you can make it as flat as you like. Yes. By however many times you stab it. Yeah, exactly. Or you can keep it more 3D. Yep. And in things like um, the snow and the berries, I've absolutely made mine quite... 3D. Yeah, no, they really are, aren't they? Yeah. And that's when made little balls and yeah. then added them. They and really stand out. Yeah. So you can do as much or as little as you like in that way. But yeah. But you can just copy this one exactly. Yes. You know, if you think, well, I'll just do it like that. You know, because it really does show you it, it is very step by step. And even if you've. Um, Look at these, the really good, clear photos. <laughs> 
And even after you've added it, if you think, oh, gosh, yes, that's quite light as opposed to that being um, quite dark up there, you can still even, while it's on, think, right, I'm just going to blend a bit there, a bit of the darker and lighter, and then put it over the top so that it's more gradual. And as it's even whilst it's on, you don't mm -hmm. have to think, oh, my gosh, I've now put that on. You can just put that on afterwards. Yes, if yeah, if you wanted to lighten it or darken yeah. it, but you could just put a very thin layer of another just colour on. Just add a little bit on top. Which makes it actually quite natural then, doesn't it? Particularly yes. Particularly doing a net, a robin, you, that's how it would be. It yep. wouldn't be solid blocks of colour. And because of the nature of the robin, the feathery, um, I always sort of lay the wool in that direction. That's the way yeah, the feathers would yeah. go and that sort of thing. But... Yes, yeah, so I suppose if you're very sort of artistic, you know, you can really mimic it. But if you just yeah. want to create a carbon copy of this, which is beautiful, you just copy the instructions, but yeah. then you can make it your own as well. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. So that's quite nice. And just to very quickly show when I do um, the berries, it's whereas with the nose, I um, rolled it and stabbed it a bit. With the um, berries, I really do just roll it up in my finger until I get a little ball. And then I just stab that in. Gonna pop that oh, so you there. don't pre-stab that nope. then, like with the nose? And then once again, absolutely underneath. Oh, because you don't... And then you are leaving it. Now, if you think, actually, I want mine to be flat, fine, stab yeah. them in. But if you just keep stabbing it in underneath, that will just attach that as a 3D nice little That's item. That's so lovely. So I really like cute, that. really cute. Now, I want to also mention the snowman as well. Yes, so yes, I let's move on to the snowman. Yeah. yeah, no, you've covered that really well. That's lovely. Good. <coughs> Excellent. So the snowman, love the yes. snowman. And I love, as you say, the fact that you make yeah, little Yeah, he's broom. a lot bigger than I thought as <laughs> yeah. well. When I saw him, in, I don't know why, when I saw the picture of him, He's actually he's so bigger. Small. I think he's he's bigger than I thought he would be. So I love it's the nice fact size, that you make his he? little scarf, you make his little hat. I know. You've got his little stick. broom, his little broom that comes out. Um, absolutely, and say all of the instructions explain all of that, but there's the um, video as well. But I will just say I said at the start that I didn't don't roll start for the oh um, yes snowman. yeah. Now once again here, big, and it explains this in the instructions, I'm going to split the um, white wall in half because half's going to be for the, the body and then the other half is going to be for the head and the arms. So I'm just pulling that apart. There we go. So when I'm starting off something which is going to be a bit more egg shaped like that, I fold it and then I tie a knot in it. Okay. And that gives you a nice core to start with. Because I think that's the, um, the biggest thing that people have said is I've started felting and I'm just not getting anywhere. Um, and it's just because you need something you to need stab something into. So because of the yeah. size of it, unlike yeah. the gnomes, which is small. And nice and small, yeah. yeah. So with him, yeah, it just gives you that nice. And then you've got your bottom that I will just spread over it. And then I'd say, I've just got... Now in all of the kits, you've got three needles. And the reason you've got three needles is because you can use one singly like that, or you can actually get a little piece of sellotape, put those two together, and stab two at the same time, which, as you can imagine, means you felt twice as yeah, fast. Yeah. So when you're doing the core like this... Yes, when it's not fine detail yeah. like a snowman's nose or a robin's beak. Yeah, exactly. You, you can, can just, just stab. stab away with your two needles... And um, here, you're open to interpretation as to how fat or thin your little snowman is going to be. Because he might have... Um, I made mine fatter at the bottom, which was kind of the traditional snowman shape. Well, um, I think they'd stand up better. Yeah. Wouldn't it? <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> They've got a fat bottom. Like well, fat snowmen bottom. are fat, aren't they? They are. Because they're sort of fat and cheerful. Although surprising, really, when they only eat snow. Yeah. They should be very thin. <laughs> yeah, they should be, really. But they are So if you buy all three in the bundle, remember, you do get the snowman. You get the robin, the snowman, and the Nordic gnomes, if you buy mm. the bundles. 
So, you know, if you're buying them as gifts, you buy all three together, make a saving, then you've got three different gifts, or two gifts and one for yourself. Or one gift, and then you could give the other two as makes, but it's quite a, it's a, quite a good multi-buy way of saving if you want to buy all of them. If you like, like the look of needle felting, and remember all the videos are on the Crafty Kit Company website as well, so do watch Steph's back, because she's been, you know, very specific about this, but also you can go on their website to see even, even more information. And that's me again in the video. And so that's me again, <laughs> yes. That's me again in the videos. It's not, a, it's not someone different or better. <laughs> or Just worse. Just me. <laughs> there we go. So, once again, you can see you can actually get him built up quite yeah so by knotting them you get that solid yeah core. you just get that nice solid core and now you can build it up into the shape that you nice. want to do so um yes so here's one that i'd done earlier where i'd obviously made him a little bit rotund at the bottom mm. so that he could actually once again felt it in that bottom so bit to make it, so you, i suppose you just keep doing that until he stands yeah he's really he really is one of those that you bring him out every year isn't yeah he? absolutely i think any of these are aren't they it's like oh <gasps> Where's my Christmas snowman? <laughs> so we're going to show you a nice little um, trick for adding. So um, we've made our body and we've made our head the same way. Did a nice little knot, made mm. it a little ball with some of the wool. Now I want to join my head. So what I have done is made a crisscross like this. I've laid out some wool in that direction and then crossed it over and made myself basically a little a little cross so i've done that i'm going to put that on top felt that into the top of the body and then get the head put that on top and wrap that oh, so that's really secure. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess otherwise trying to attach that on without ruining the shape of it. Yeah. Mm. So it just gives you that ability to... It's a question from Wendy. Oh. She says... She says, I always break so many needles. What am I doing wrong? I do try to be gentle. Okay, that is because more than likely you are moving. You, that's where I said earlier about yeah. you've got to go in and out at the same angle. Now, I've actually felted this quite hard. And if I put that in and I try and move it, that's bending the needle. Right. Okay. So maybe slow down and make sure you're going in and out at okay. the same. Yeah. Because I think sometimes, and that's the times when I've broken a needle, it's because I've gone fast. And mm. actually, I know I've gone in at one angle and thought, oh, and I've moved it. And that's the biggest reason why you will break mm. a needle. Um, because as I say, it's thinner there yes, than it is up yeah, here. So, so if you're brutal. in and you're moving it, it's, gonna, it's going to break. So that's more than likely. Because you don't have to um, stab fast. No, no, no. You can do it nice and slowly. I mean, I'm, I tend Does to... Does it help if you use the tool? Um, only because of for the holding. Oh, okay. Yeah. But not for the I mean, you can, you can get tools, and you guys have got tools where for two needles and more needles yeah. in them. Um, and that's more just for the speed, as in more needles you put in. But in regarding the tool, that is purely just okay, it so helps you. Yeah. Someone who really doesn't want to grip onto something that, they, in those bits. Yeah. And you can get much thicker ones as well. Because okay. the multi tools, even if it's a tool which holds three, you don't have to put three needles in it. So if you find a tool you really like, and it says, oh, it's a seven needle holder, you can just put one needle yeah, in it. Yeah, okay. You know? and, and that's in the beginner's felting kit bundle, yes. isn't it? Yeah. The actual wooden handle. So it's probably she just needs to slow down a bit then. Yeah. And just say, watch the angle that she's going mm. in and out at. Yeah. I would okay. suggest that would be the biggest thing. Okay. Just adding our little head. Now, I think the, um, the hat is a nice little interesting detail, which I will just come to. So the hat is made up of a nice little um, circle and a, and a little tube. 
Okay. And um, one of the best ways to, in needle felting, to create anything like that where you've actually got an edge to it is obviously you can get your scissors and trim it around the sides if you've just got tired of trying to um, stab everything in. But a nice technique to do that is, I'm just going to put some both ways, is to decide what size that's going to be and just stab yourself a little circle shape. And having stabbed that, just fold those sides in where you've stabbed it in. You can just roll the edges in. And because you mm. haven't got the edge of the wall, and you've got a fold of the wall, it just makes that a nice cleaner edge yeah. than if you've got the edges around here and you're trying to actually felt them back in. And once again, you really don't have to go very deep at all. And you're just pulling those back in. And that counts for any shape, really, that you're doing when you're felting, not just for the snowman. It's yeah, just a nice like it's technique. a really nice, neat edge. So that's yeah. sort of the rim of the hat there. Yeah. And then once you've um, done that and you just want to attach your little tube, which you've done mm -hmm. like you did for your gnome, um, you literally just pop it on. Oh, so that's just stabs from, under Stab, yeah. from underneath. So you can give them a really tall top hat yep. or a bowler hat. Give them any shape hat you like, yeah. A bowler hat would be great, wouldn't he? Yeah, it would actually, wouldn't he? There we go. Dabbing around the outside a little bit. Yeah, no, it fe I'm feeling like this is certainly achievable. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, these absolutely are beginner's kits. We say from age 10. Okay. Um, because obviously with needles and things. Yes. But yeah. we all know whether our children, grandchildren are capable yes, of things. Yeah. But certainly with um, our granddaughter, she said the biggest thing for her was actually how long she had to stab and do something continually right that was her big issue not the needles not the needle oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> so i always say to people when they say oh can my granddaughter who's eight mm. or nine do it i say well you know whether she's someone or he's someone yeah. who can actually do something repeated yes, for a long absolutely. time absolutely and they've got the patience yeah but then it's a lovely it's a lovely craft to do because it's meditative isn't it oh absolutely absolutely it's just so beautiful as well you wouldn't be able i just don't think you'd be able to buy something like that well not unless it cost a fortune no <laughs> but you know we were saying um earlier about you know, making presents yes i mean yeah. this is something that you can make for somebody and they can have as their christmas decoration and they bring i mean i know we've um traditionally um school children have sort of made four balls haven't mm -hmm. they i've got many yeah. four balls under my tree that <laughs> yeah. but it's it perhaps is nice that you they make a snowman or you make mm. a snowman. Yeah, no, it's lovely. And then it's like something that. then you bring out every year, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. And it, it's, a, it's a new craft. And I think it's important with children as well to teach them all different crafts because they don't yes. necessarily pick up the one that you like. No. They might t they pick find up their different. Own. They find their own, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to... Uh, but they won't know which one that is if they haven't tried no. lots of them. So that's the, yeah, that's the you thing. see the beauty of non-screen time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> mm. So one other shape, which I think, I mean, obviously we've got the scarf shape, and that would be by having nice... Um, we've got just under five minutes perfect. left. We're doing very yeah, well. That's Beautifully fine. timed. So um, the scarf, as you would expect, is you would just elongate and um, felt that into the length that you want. Right. And... If you found that once again you were getting slightly um, shabby edges that you didn't like, you can put some along the outside and oh wrap okay, them so over that just gives it, it nice. Gives it that nice. nice. Yeah, that's a really good tip. But one little shape um, is the nose, and uh, which is <laughs> going to be your little carrot. And here I've, I have several ways that I do this. One is um, wrapping it around a cocktail stick, but 
I think the easiest way is to just stamp a triangle and then fold over and stab another triangle. You just keep stabbing into oh, okay. that triangle shape and then we will fold it and that will give it its and the great thing is when you've got extra bits you just pull it off and then we will fold it. So we've got it. a nice message from Christine. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I love felting. Oh brill. And I haven't done it in years. And I've never done amazing 3D felting ah. before. They are so they are so cute, and what an amazing demo. Excellent. So, you know, if we can, as part of, well, sewing through, but yarn lane for me is if we can inspire people, people who've maybe tried it years ago and not thought, mm. oh, wow, gosh, it has been updated, or, yeah, it is cool, or Absolutely. it is lovely, or people who haven't tried things before and thought, oh, I could have a go at that. Absolutely. You know, just because you do one craft doesn't mean say you don't like doing others. Or you might know people who say, oh, you're so crafty and I'd like to do that. And then you find something that you know that they would like as well. Yeah. You know, anyone who gets, they talk about mindfulness and living in the moment. If you don't craft, you don't have to worry about that because you do. <laughs> yeah. It's not so something you have to no. think about or have an app to do. Absolutely. If you are a crafter, you are incredibly you're mindful. You're doing it. Uh, absolutely. You're in the moment. Yeah, it's you? not something you have to, they say, you know, be in the moment, breathe, and concentrate mm. on your breath. No, just start sewing, <laughs> yeah. or knitting, yeah, any or of them. needle felting, any of the above. <laughs> or any of the above. You don't need to count your breath. Just Absolutely. take a craft. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I completely yeah. agree. And, um, and say wet felting is something which people have done for a long time. Um, and in fact, you can use needle felting to um, embellish oh, wow. yeah, wet felting course. and things as well. So um, it can be used with so many different things. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's oh, so the carrot. So you yes, yeah, so the carrot. So basically, and once again, I tend to roll it then just to get, get it that bit, nice yeah. little. And um, and then he, he appears to be quite long, but then when you actually put him in and start tacking him in, you need quite a length to be. Felt yeah, I in. guess so. Yes, because it well actually the good thing about that is it actually looks like the carrot's pushed into the nose yeah. head, which it would which be. is what it would be. Yeah, because you just shove a carrot in. Yeah, absolutely, and then you just take those ends and literally just felt them in. One thing is if you think, oh, my little nose is just not strong enough, you could get yourself a tiny bit of glue. And just uh, okay. If that's what you, if that is the bit that is just failing you, then you get a bit go of glue. Because once again, you know, there's no holds barred. You do whatever works for you. <laughs> Our next door neighbour, little girl, she was only five, she made a snowman last year in the one bit of snow we had. And our dog, quite a new dog, ran up to it, jumped up, took the carrot out and ran off with it and ate it. Excellent. Wasn't very good for the no. neighbours, that wasn't. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much. Okay. That's been brilliant. You've really explained those to us. So I, I love them. I don't know which one I want to do, actually. Maybe the snowman. I wasn't sure, but yeah. I think I really like that little Converted. snowman. Converted. But thank you ever so much. Okay, it's been great. Okay, so if you want to buy one of the kits, um, where should we start? Let's start with a bundle of all three of them. Now you've seen all three. So if you want to buy all three and you want the Robin and the Snowman and the Nordic Gnomes. Oh, he's got a still there, so I don't have to lay them all down. Um, all three of them. And remember, as um, Steph said, there is actually more than enough in the kits to make more than this. And you get all that, you know, in every kit comes with the felting tools, the sponge, everything you need. But like for the Robin, there's more than enough that um to do it so remember you do get all the boxes with everything in you won't get them all joined together so you will get three separate boxes if you buy the bundle so you get the robin in the hoop the festive snowman and the nordic gnomes which you can make them your own when oh gosh that was a bit too far forward um when you get them, do watch it back on YouTube, which will give you all the instructions. You know, you can watch what Steph's done. But again, if you go onto the Crafty Kit Company website, all the instructions are there. So, you know, you can say whoever you give it to, remember that you can watch it on YouTube and watch it online as well. So if you want to just buy the gnomes, there they are. There's three there, but as Steph was saying, you can probably make three or four, depending on the size you make. You can make them your own by having mad beards and wild beards and 
horns and toadstool hats and all sorts. Oh yeah, you could have a little, you could do like in your whole family, you could give them all a little bit each and say, right, gnome competition. Be a good Christmas day at dinner activity that, wouldn't it? At the end of Christmas dinner, let's all make a gnome. That's a really nice thing to do, isn't it? Well, they maybe not have too much to drink <laughs> beforehand. You really will stab yourself. Um, and then finally, there's the festive snowman. So in that kit, you get everything, including the pipe cleaner and the string so that you can make his broom. So you don't have to think about that. But this is one of those sort of um, like a stocking filler gift, isn't it? If your stocking's big enough. Yeah. But that's a really nice, particularly, you know, for, well, children, but also teenagers. Oh, I don't know what to put in. I know any of mine would love one of those in theirs. So that's only 11 99 for the festive snowman. And... There is the robin as well. So if you only want the robin, there's the robin kit in the hoop. And remember, there's more than enough in the kit to make them more than one robin. Um, you just need a different background. But as Steph was saying, you could use just um, a plain cotton or linen as well. Now, we do, non-Christmassy, we do have some other kits from um, the Crafty Kit Company. Exactly the same, same process, same technique. This one, I love this. This is the need of, this is a hope again, but it's a rainbow the rainbow of hope so it's lovely it's got a white felt background and then it's got all the colors of the rainbow to go inside and then the little clouds that go across the bottom that's a lovely really really lovely isn't it and that is 13.99 and again everything you need all the colors are in the kit and the sponge and everything um, there's also the beginner's needle felting beginner's felting bundle So if you want, if you're thinking about um, felting and you like the idea and you want some more supplies, there's more colours in here and you've got the needles, two foam pans, but you've also got the wooden handed felting um, tool. So if you've bought any of the kits or you want to have a go at the beginner, this goes really well with it. Um, and how about a hedgehog? Just finally, 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 since the hedgehog's won the cross-stitch competition. Mm. Oh, the hedgehog is only available if you buy the mega bundle, which gives you all of the kits and the tools of all of that, if you want to buy all of those. So if you want the begin, the bee, the rabbit, the hedgehog, I mean, this is like all your Christmas presents, isn't it? Buy the, this bundle. The Christmas isn't in this bundle. This is just the non-Christmas bundle. So... Um, Yarn Lane is in, on again tomorrow, tomorrow, 12 o'clock, and we've got um, the most amazing yarn called I Want to Make a Blankie, and Wendy Orlando is going to show you how to knit or crochet, and the most fantastic blankets, so see you tomorrow.